whether you are a beginner programmer or an experienced programmer, some of the new AI code editors really can help transform the way you learn or work on projects. And I'll introduce Cursor and then also Google Colab with the Gemini. Now, if you're used to programming already and just let's say you want to go to ChatGPT and you have a question about it, you can paste your code in here, you can attach it. Uh, you know, so I could say, uh, how do I create a loop in Python as an example? And then uh, there are many generative AI tools out there that can help you diagnose your problem, your bugs, other things. You could paste that in there and then get an answer and then paste maybe some example code back into your IDE or integrated development environment. What I want to talk about, though, is not doing this but using a tool that is designed specifically for AI. In this case, this is an AI code editor's cursor. It's a branch of uh, you know, another tool that many use, which is VS Code from Microsoft. And so if you use VS Code, this is gonna be feel very familiar to you. You can click download and then get started. And I just want to give an overview of this. Let's say you have a Jupyter Notebook. This is from the Data Driven Engineering course. So if you'd like to download this one, just come to apmonitor.com slash DDE. And off to the right here, you'll see the basics, tuple, list, set, dictionary, numpy, and pandas. I'll run just this one, the basics, and then I'll show you an example with pandas as well. Okay, so if I open this up, Okay, I have my Jupyter Notebook set. I'm using a base install of Python that's already on my machine. And it talks about converting between different data types. Okay, and I can highlight this. And then if I do uh, Control K or Command K, I can say something like uh, convert uh, this to a float. Okay, and if I hit enter, it's using Cloud 3. Point, uh, cloud 3.5, and it shows, uh, do I want to accept this change? And I click Control Enter to convert it to a float. Okay, so uh, very easy to use. You can highlight your code and also do Control Shift L and then start chatting about it here. Uh, so what are the common uh, data types in Python? Okay, with your code as a reference there, and it will give you some common uh, types. And then you can ask it a follow-up question, for example, and then push those changes back into your code. So this is a way to really accelerate with generative AI where you don't have to copy it over into something like ChatGPT or another tool and then copy it back, but it's built into this integrated development environment. Okay, so let me show you another way to interact with this as well. If I come here to the basics, and you can import this into Google Colab, or you can just use this link. It'll bring it up here in Google Colab. And let's say I have an error. I leave off a parenthesis. Okay, I'm going to run it anyway, even though it's not authored by me, or I opened it up. It is authored by me, but... Uh, that's the error message, okay? So it says incomplete input, and it shows right here that we're missing something, and it says you can fix the error. Okay, so it suggests, it suggests that we put a parenthesis there, and if I click the checkbox, then it will fix that for me. Okay, but if it has something that it really can't figure out for I in, uh, range okay and if I put one to X something like that okay print I okay so I'm gonna do this now and it couldn't necessarily give me a quick fix here okay X is not defined but it can explain the error and then Gemini will open up here on the right this is very similar to cursor Okay, and you have an explanation about uh, X has not been defined. You're using that in your range function. And so it doesn't know what to do with a variable that has no assigned values and throws a name error. Okay, so that is another way that we can use generative AI. This is Gemini as a tool. One of the things I like about cursor, I'm going to go back there now, is I can switch uh, on this one if I do Command K 
or control K, I can switch between different models as well. Okay, so I have the GPT-4.0, I have others. So it gives you a few more options instead of Gemini to uh, work with. And in particular, the Cloud, uh, cloud 3.5, uh, it has a 200K context window, so a much larger context where you can feed in all of your code and, and then it will be able to interact and answer questions about it. So one of the nice things about this is you can deal with much larger context windows and be able to chat and work on code that's much more involved in this uh, in this environment right here. Now you probably wouldn't use a Jupyter Notebook. It might be just plain text file with Python code or other types of code. But it gives you an example of ways that you could use this IDE or Google Colab to have more generative AI in your programming. Now I'll, I'll just step through back to uh, the course that I have and uh, it's freely available. You can go through these seven right here that teach the basics of Python. And then it talks about data access uh, with overview of how to import text, audio, video, databases, working with those uh, sensors, especially with microcontrollers and others, cloud and web scraping. And then it goes on to data transfer, especially for engineering applications where you might use Modbus, MQTT, OPC UA, or WebSockets, okay, to move data between computers. Uh, there's a little bit about time series data, okay, and then a data engineering section where we talk about uh, the whole process of taking data, cleansing it, visualizing it, extracting features, balance scale split, deploy, and especially as we move on to machine learning. So with all of these, it can feel a little bit intimidating jumping into this code, especially as a learner, first time learner. And what I wanna just strongly emphasize here is you don't have to do it alone. Now you have these, like a, almost like a one-on-one -on -one tutor that is helping you with every step of the way. And this is not just a website like uh, ChatGPT, but this is integrated into the learning experience where the AI is part of the editor now. And I think that you know the AI hasn't changed and the editors haven't changed, but when you combine those two, it, it creates uh, just a seamless environment where you can work and learn and, uh, and, and complete projects. So I just think highly encourage that, highly encourage that that you, especially as you are learning, to not use it as a crutch to learn, but when you're getting stuck or you need additional information, just start to learn how to incorporate some of these tools and you'll become a much more effective and efficient programmer. Don't turn off your brain, don't uh, you know, not think through problems and troubleshoot but use these types of things to get you up to those higher levels of learning and understanding more quickly. So I've taught short courses, I've taught, taken programmers from zero programming experience up to the point where they're doing very sophisticated things within just a couple days. And a lot of this is due to the new generative AI tool. So I just encourage you to use them, try out Cursor, try out you know, the Google Gemini within the Google uh, Colab notebooks. And, uh, and also, you know, things are going to be changing in the near future. So if you have additional comments, please include those. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear uh, what is working for you. Maybe it's uh, Copilot. Uh, you know, there are many other tools that are out there that are also very good. So I'd love to hear from you uh, if you have other ones that you'd also recommend.